Let's begin with that market reaction to CPI. As we said, a 4.9 year on year in headline, 5.5 on core, Jim. Uh, used cars actually up for the first time in several months, up four. Yeah, I've been struggling over that. Uh, new cars actually are in both in abundance and also you're getting much better uh, credit terms. And so I don't really, I mean, if you wanted to look at what I think May would be, that's going to be down. Uh, I also think that I've, I've begun to take a lot of issue with the compilation of these things. For instance, I do a lot of work on apparel. Just going back to Matt Boasso on this from J.P. Morgan, but apparel's up in price, and yet there is no, there is no single piece of clothing that's up in price. So how did they get that? Fuel, fuel is barely down, and yet uh, gasoline is down more than a buck and a quarter from a year ago. So even the areas that are, with the exception of rent, that are up, are I think poorly tabulated. And I like honestly. You, know, you can say that there's that they're just wrong all the time, so so what? But I just think that this is a very, very positive number for the Fed and what they're doing. Kind of flies in the face of what uh, Mr. Williams said yesterday. It, this is, David, uh, the beginning of what I find to be an almost universal categorical decline in every single price. Um, Sarah uh, was with Williams yesterday yeah. uh, in Midtown, and I'm told that we actually... Uh, uh, have some sound from that interview. We should we should take a listen because he perhaps had a somewhat different view than we yes. just heard. First of all, we haven't said we're done raising rates. What we're signaling is we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we achieve our goals and we're going to assess what's happening in the economy and make the decisions based on that data. Uh, and if additional policy firming is appropriate, then you know we'll do that. So I do not see in my baseline forecast any reason to cut interest rates this year. Certainly well, no cuts this year, according to him. Well, look, maybe the data, that, maybe the data are irrelevant. What do you mean? Well, if you listen to Stan Druckenmiller, he would say, "Look, they, they've inflated us to the point where it, this doesn't really matter. It's just a, ca- a catastrophic development." Now, if you go back to 2022, uh, he said the same thing. He said there'd be a big bubble. We do have a bubble. These numbers may not be convincing enough to the Fed, which wants to see more than just a month or two. But, the, Carl, the, the fact is, is that almost every calculation is incorrect. You don't trust the data. The data is empirically wrong. Yeah. I mean, Cleveland Fed was even hotter than, uh, than the event, than yeah. this print came I out. Mean, well, you know, look, okay, so you have, I do a lot of work with the utilities. I've spoken to utilities for 40 million people in this country. And the utilities shows very, uh, barely down. But natural gas has been cut in half. So, I mean, I don't know how I, I'm stuck with what I do. I had um, Exxon the other day, American Electric Power. These are very big transmission yeah, companies. Very they're, big electric companies. They're not getting any numbers like this. So, I mean, like, we can, just, we can just say that, I mean, these numbers are not put together by Salesforce, okay? They're not put together by, uh, by Google. Uh, they're put together by a group of people who are tabulating, making a lot of phone calls. Well, I make a lot of phone calls. I make better phone calls than they make. You make better phone calls than the, than the staff at the... Uh, That's good. Yeah. Fed? Really? Yeah, I do. All in one day. No, I just do nothing but make these. I've made my life completely miserable in order to be able to do better than they do. I have witnessed you working when you're not on set, and it is a thing to behold. uh, It never ends. That said, I mean, this is their job, their full-time job. You're busy talking to Jason, what's his name, about... Getting a, Robbins. getting a, thank you. Getting a, you know, getting a line on the debt ceiling. You're well, talking to brokers in New Mexico about land there. You're okay. not focused solely on this. That's what they are. Don't Am- forget his spirits, Brent. Okay. Yes. And, okay. Here's selling Who mezcal. Talking? I'm talking to Amazon. I'm talking to Walmart. I'm talking to Target. I'm talking to Kohl's. I'm talking to Macy's. I'm talking to TGX. I'm talking to Burlington. I don't know. Who am I not talking to? <laughs> Tell um, me who I'm not talking to. Well, I'll talk talking. to them too. The guy I mean, who run, of, runs the bodega down the street. From, with, I mean, with none of those is telling me the tech, that apparel's up. Heck, I talk to Ollie's. I mean, I don't even know who else to talk to. I try to put together a pastiche, if not a mosaic of prices. Okay, and so, again, give us your conclusion from well, all those phone calls down. that you make. I'm saying apparel's down, and they say apparel's up. I want to know where apparel's up. I just, I mean, I, tell me. I mean, you know, I, I'll tell you, across the street is Hermes. Apparel's up. <laughs> Maybe they're overweighting the Hermes. Yeah. LVMH parallels up. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what's interesting that goes along with this is the B of A card spend data today. Uh, total per household down one 
in April. That's the first drop yep, in, since go. February of 21. And a lot of that's happening at the high end. Yes. Where pay, uh, pay growth is not uh, what it's yeah. been at the low end. And look, I'm, David, I clearly speak in hubris. But what I am saying is, is that you have to believe in the Druckmiller. You have to believe Stan Druckmiller's view, which is that it's all a bubble and these numbers are just kind of Lilliputian. Uh, because if you actually believe that these numbers are, if you're data dependent, you're struggling over how, how uh, tight you should be because um, you're winning.